Young people should be given chances in life, especially the chance of a good education. Sometimes, that means going to study in another country, far from home and family. Young Tuaine is at school in New Zealand, but her home is on a South Sea island, where the warm waters of the lagoon are as blue as the sky above. I am going to use this big notebook for my diary, and write down everything I feel and do. I brought the book with me when I left home. I used it for English at my school back home, and when I left, there were still plenty of pages not written on. So it will be good for a diary. At home, I read a story called "The Diary of Anne Frank." It was a very sad story, but I read it lots of times. Anne said it made her feel better to write things down. It helped her with all those troubles she had. So, maybe my diary will help me feel better too. Tomorrow, it will be two months since I left home to come here. Sixty-one days. Just two numbers when I write it like that. Sixty-one days. But it is the slowest and longest time I can remember. How can sixty-one days go so slowly? I still think of home all the time, and I can remember every little thing about the island, except how warm it was. I can't remember that, because here it is so cold all the time. But when I lie here and close my eyes, I can see my friends and my family. And all my favourite places, Mama and Papa, and Mele, and Metua, and Rima, and the big black rock where we swam in the lagoon, and the path that goes to the top of our mountain, and the cool wind at the top. And if sometimes I can't remember everything. There are the photos by my bed, and all my seashells. When I was a baby, I was given to my grandparents, because I was the youngest in our family, and that is our custom. My real parents live on another island. Our village is called Vaipaka, and our house. Is a little bit back from the road that goes through the village, by the hill. When the last big storm, called Sharon, came, the waves from the lagoon came right over the road, but not as far as our garden, which was lucky. The wind blew all the flowers out of our garden, but at least the roof stayed on our house. Not like at Mele's place. A great piece of metal blew off their roof right over the house, and cut their goat's head off. It was terrible for the poor animal. There were some bad things that happened in our village, like Sharon, and some accidents on the motorbikes, but mostly there were good things. And I remember the good things, not the bad things. School was good too. I liked it at the college, and I nearly always came top of my class. But I'm sorry about that now. It was coming top that probably sent me away. We had exams in the first term, 
and I came first or second in every exam. Mr. Ashton, the teacher, came to our house and said to Mama and Papa that our school on the island wasn't good enough for me, that I should go to school in New Zealand. Mama and Papa talked about it to Uncle George. I was worried because I didn't want to go away, but they talked about it again with Mr. Ashton. And all my family put in some money for the plane and sent me here to Auntie Vaine's. Auntie Vaine is my mother's cousin, and she has been living in Auckland for over twenty years. There's four of us here in her house Auntie, Ta, he's seventeen, Marlene, and me. Marlene and I sleep in the same bedroom. She's six. The week after I arrived, Auntie bought me a uniform, and I started at the girls' college. I've got to stop my diary now. The video has finished, and Marlene wants to go to bed. At first, Auntie was friendly. She asked me all about home and all the relations she hadn't seen for so long, and she told me the things she used to do when she was a girl on the island. Then she asked me, How much money did I bring with me from the island? And I said I didn't bring any, and she got a bit angry. I told her Mama and Papa didn't have any money to give me. And they told me that Auntie had a good job and earned plenty of money. Auntie said she worked in the chicken factory, but she didn't get much money, and most of it went on paying the rent for the house. Then I asked her where was my uncle. I didn't like to ask about him at first, because perhaps he had left her or something. Auntie started crying then and told me about the accident. Uncle Ben worked for a building company that made bridges. One day, one of those very long, heavy pieces of metal fell on him. His back was broken, and he died in hospital. I told her I was very sorry I didn't know about the accident. Nobody at home heard about it. She said, Uncle Ben didn't come from our islands. He was from Neue, so she only told his family. I felt really sad for Auntie then, and bad that I came to live with her when she didn't have enough money. I haven't been able to write in my diary recently. I have had too much schoolwork to do. School is very hard here, but the teachers are nice. My class teacher, Mrs. Price, is best. She's great. She introduced me to lots of girls. But they aren't from my island. They're Samoans, and their language is very strange to me. The school is so big, too. Over a thousand girls and so many rooms. It is scary in a school where there are so many strangers. Everyone seems cleverer than me. Their English is so good. I try hard to keep up, but I get much lower marks than I did at home. I don't have enough time to do my work. That's the trouble. Auntie is working evenings at the chicken factory, and I have to get the dinner every night. The only place I can study is in the bedroom, and the noise from the video is so bad. Every night, Tar gets some videos 
and always they are noisy, full of shooting and wars and shouting. I hate that Sylvester Stallone. I think it's bad for Tar to watch just that kind of video. Marlene too. Yesterday, I went and asked Tar, please, could he turn the video down? Because I was trying to study in my room, and he got angry, and shouted bad words at me. He thinks he's so special. What a laugh! He's just a stupid boy who can't get a job. He won't turn down the video. I'm going to bed now. It's Sunday, but we didn't go to church. Auntie used to go to church, but she never goes now. When I asked why, she said she didn't believe in God any more. I thought that was terrible, and I asked her why. She said it was because God took Uncle Ben away from them, and left them with no one to take care of them, and not enough money. I don't know if that's right, but I can understand the way Auntie feels. I'm not sure about God. He can be very cruel sometimes, even to good people like Anne Frank and Uncle Ben. In the afternoon. We took the bus to visit Uncle Ben's grave. There is a smiling photo on the grey stone, in shiny black letters. We all cried at the grave, even Tar, when Auntie put the flowers on it. In the photo on his grave, Uncle Ben looks like he was a nice man. I didn't go to school today. I wanted to, but it's a long way. And I have to get the bus, and the bus ticket costs a lot of money. Auntie said she didn't have any money left. She was getting angry with me, so I thought I will walk to school tomorrow instead of getting the bus. Today, I tried to do my schoolwork by myself at home, but I didn't do very well. I am very tired tonight. This morning, I got up at six o'clock, and made some sandwiches for my lunch, and I left before any of the others were up. It was still dark, and very scary because there was nobody in the streets. I walked right down Dominion Road, and slowly the sky got lighter. My school bag was hurting my shoulder. And I was trying to remember the way the bus went, from the time when I had a ticket. In the end, I got to the school, but it took a long, long time, and I was late. And the teacher at the gate took my name, and I had a detention. That was the first time I ever had one. My class teacher, Mrs. Price, asked me why I was late. I didn't like to tell her my auntie didn't have any money for the bus, so I said I slept in. Mrs. Price asked me how I was getting on here, and she seemed a bit worried. At lunchtime, she brought a fifth form girl called Moana, who was from my country, to see me. Moana and I talked in our language. She doesn't come from my island, but I knew some cousins of hers. I enjoyed talking to Moana, but it made me sad because I began thinking about home and all the people I knew. When I told Moana about walking to school, she took me to the school library and showed me a street map. We saw that there was a much shorter way for me to come to school. I don't have to follow the bus route. Moana asked me if I would like to come to her place one day. But I saw on the map that she lives at Teatatu, too far away from my place. I walked home that quicker way that I found on the map, 
but because of my detention, I didn't get home until six o'clock. I am very tired tonight. I can't write any more.